Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. So Mason War is the CEO and co-founder of COS Accounting and Tax out of Provo, Utah. He and his partner, Zachary Bassett, have started multiple businesses and have led COS Accounting to be one of the fastest growing accounting firms in the nation. They specialize in supporting independent contractors, just like rideshare professionals and other gig workers, helping them save thousands of dollars each year in taxes and qualify for tax credits that are widely unknown. Mason and his wife, uh, they've got three small children, so they're one ahead of me. They love to travel and like to focus on their family, faith, and having fun. Fun. So, Mason, how are you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Yeah, I'm excited to chat. And, uh, you know, I think it's funny because one thing I've always kind of held is, especially with Uber and Lyft drivers and gig workers, is that there's so much tax potential and tax opportunity. Right. But frankly, I find that most people get into it, you know, really looking at it much more simplistically, right? How much money am I making? What can I deduct? And then they're done. Um, what have you found? Yeah, so that it's it's funny that you say that because we've actually that's how we started within mm -hmm. 1099 contractors mm -hmm. and most people think you know I'm not having money taken out of my check automatically yeah. I get to reconcile that later with the IRS and they don't take into account the fact that there's so many write-offs yeah. way more than they probably think um, I I was actually a salesman for a long time um, doing door-to-door -door sales. Mm -hmm. So I was one of those guys that would knock on your door and try to sell you pest control or okay. or a dish network or one of those. And uh, I good for character I, I building. Friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I became friends with an accountant who's actually my business partner now, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, there's so many things you can write yeah. off, and 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 it can get as it can get very complex, yeah. like you were saying." Uh, most people don't recognize how how much we can do for them. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point to sort of set the stage because the conversation that I want to focus on today is this credit called the employee retention credit. And I'm someone who will, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't consider myself by any means a tax expert, but I have filed a lot of different taxes and, don't, you know, sure. I probably know a lot more than the average person, especially when it comes to 1099. But I was really surprised that I had never even heard of the employee retention credit until Jake on your team, who's been doing uh -huh. a great job, reached out to me yeah. and told me about it. And I was like, at first I was like, okay, this sounds way too good it to be true. It sounds too good to be true, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So can you tell me what is the employee retention credit? Why does it sound yeah. too good to be true? And how'd you guys even discover it? Yeah, it's really, yeah. It, so I actually, it was my intern mm -hmm. who brought it to us. He had heard about it uh, from a, I think it was a tax podcast. Okay of a guy up here in Salt Lake, we're out of Provo, Utah, and uh, he was mentioning it and he started looking into this credit. When the CARES Act passed those, mm -hmm. like the stimulus package for individual people, they passed the PPP and the other one called the EIDL. Right. The, the other one that nobody knew about was this ERC, yeah. uh, the Employee Retention Credit. And it's, it's funny because most accountants don't even know yeah. what it is. I've interviewed accountants since then, and they're like, what is it that you're doing? Yeah. So that was something that was uh, new for us as well. And it was it, it, like nobody had really heard about it or, or knew kind of what, what it was. But essentially what it is is it's basically an incentive for people to keep their employees mm -hmm. or to be self-employed and uh, helps them be, to be able to have some sort of – it's kind of like a stimulus for your business. Got it. So to put it as simply as I can, if you earn – ten thousand dollars or more mm -hmm. this year you would qualify for the maximum credit up to five thousand dollars okay so the irs is going to say okay we're going to send you a credit for five thousand dollars minus the payroll tax yeah. so they take the payroll tax out so you end up getting a check typically for about thirty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. and this this applies for basically every 1099 contractor all we need to do is restructure their business yeah. and then all of a sudden they apply as long as COVID affected them yeah but I can't imagine anyone in the country not being affected by COVID. So yeah, there's a few stipulations that the, that the IRS has, but For sure. it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And we'll, we'll definitely get into those stipulations in a second okay. because, um, but, but I think like you mentioned, I mean, I, I like the way you put it, it's sort of a stimulus for your business. How does it differ though sure. from the PPP and even the EIDL? Yeah, so the PPP and the EIDL were both loans. Okay. Now, with the EIDL, you could get like a thousand dollar advance yeah. or like a grant, and you didn't have to pay that back. Got it. The loans, as long as you like follow the exact steps that they gave you, 
um, then uh, you you wouldn't they would be forgivable. Mm -hmm. But most people um, they didn't even qualify for the PPP. Right. So we're actually working with a couple institutions right now that have like one institution has a hundred thousand businesses that got denied for the PPP. Oh, wow. Like send them Do you know our what way. What were the because, reasons that they got denied for that? Oh, uh, either um, okay. So they based the PPP off last year's income. Mm, okay. And uh, so some people they just started their business. Yeah. They started it like December, or they started it in 2020, and then they wouldn't they wouldn't qualify. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of random how they how they approved because there were people that we thought wouldn't get approved got approved for PPP, mm -hmm. and then obviously on the reverse side. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's, there's a, a, a few things there. Yeah. So. Well, and I know, yeah. So that, I think that lines up with our experience. You know, there weren't a ton of Uber and Lyft drivers and gig workers who qualified for that yeah. PPP loan on the EIDL side. We released a video on YouTube. I'm looking at it right now and now has yeah. 185,500 views. <laughs> and so yeah. the EIDL program awesome. was quite popular. And it was, I will say just from my personal point of view, it was really cool because drivers were applying for it and basically getting a free thousand dollars, right? It was the thousand dollar grant. Um, and that's what right. most folks were taking advantage of. And, you know, it's not a huge amount, but I think at a time when people needed it, it was pretty cool to see, you know, if you go through the comments, they say, wow, this is amazing. Thank you for the free thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of a weird feeling though, cause I'm not really giving out the money. We're just kind of, you know, doing a video on it, but it, it yeah. was amazing. Like how many people ended up getting that EIDL, I think from our audience directly. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I think, uh, yeah, it's funny because I applied for the EIDL mm -hmm. and I have an S corporation or an LLC. Yeah. I got denied oh, really? for the EIDL. I'm like, why <laughs> did I get denied? I have a legitimate business. I've been affected by COVID. Yeah. So it's just it's just funny how the IRS and SBA yeah. work. And it's important to note too that as a tax professional, I'm sure you're aware, but a credit uh -huh. is really the best of the best, right? A credit oh, is basically awesome. free money okay. versus a deduction or versus, you know, really any other kind of benefit that you might get. A credit is just straight free money, right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, the, the cool thing about this tax credit is that they don't have to track it mm -hmm. and they don't have to pay it back. It's just it's it's just like the twelve hundred dollars that you got per person as the stimulus. It's just to put money in your pocket to keep your business growing or keep it going yeah. or keep your people employed. And essentially, anybody with up to a hundred employees can qualify mm -hmm. for this. So um, you know, if you have a, a, you know your your staff on your team, I think we helped one of your guys yeah. uh, get it. Anybody really that's ten ninety nine or that has an LLC or S corp, either a single member or multiple employees can qualify. Yeah. Very cool. So let's get into the nitty gritty. All right. Put your, yeah. put your tax hat on. I know it's the end of the day, but hopefully you're ready. Um, so sure. we, we sort of, you highlighted what it is. I mean, I guess when it was established as part of the CARES Act and first of all, when yeah. does it expire? Are there any other sort of high level yeah, details? So, yes. So in fact, that's why we are so busy right now. Mm -hmm. We're, we're trying to, trying to help a lot of your uh, listeners and viewers mm -hmm. and as well as many of our, many other of our own clients. Um, but December 31st, it ends. Now, both other packages that I've seen Congress mm -hmm. uh, try to push through have both included the ERC in in conjunction with the PPP. Got it. So we might be seeing a care package come through that includes both. Mm -hmm. So you can get the PPP and the ERC, which could be, I mean, yeah. uh, amazing for, for basically everyone. Yeah, so that's so. good to know. So if people are listening or watching to this after January 1st, 2021, they still may be eligible. I, but I think we can all probably agree that if you know, if you're watching this right now, you should probably not wait because I wouldn't necessarily want to rely on the on Congress, oh, uh, everyone sure. coming together on and, that. And, and to, be, to be fair, we have to file quarterly taxes by end of January. Mm -hmm. And so really somebody could go yeah. all the way till the end of January. And there's the option that we do an amended tax return mm. the problem is then we get it's hard with w-2s and got so it. It, it can be it can be complicated okay um, so we want to get it done before that got it well that's good to know and so you mentioned yeah. that uh this was really for i think it's interesting that it's for anyone from you know like your average gig worker 1099 worker all the way up to businesses with 100 people are there any other stipulations i mean uh who, who exactly is eligible for this i guess i would say yeah so there were a few things yeah there's a few things that the irs came out with and a, a couple of those things included um if you had a full or partial closure okay. and that's hard to define right. because there obviously there's there's government mandated closures mm -hmm. like in California it I mean in New York and some of these other places it was strict yeah. lockdowns still many places are on lockdowns and so that would be included in that especially for gig workers yep. because you know a lot of drivers they can't even, like yep. their their business is gone yep. right 
and, and in many other areas where you know there's curfews after 10 p.m. A lot of their business is going to restaurants or to clubs and waiting out there for for their clients. But if those places are closed, they're losing a lot of um, a lot of their potential income. Yeah. So that would be also included in a full or partial closure. Um, the government also said that it could be a 50 percent reduction in gross sales. So if we looked at last year mm -hmm. and we said, OK, what did you earn in Lyft or Uber or DoorDash yeah. in um, in like June of 2019 versus June of 2020? If we can show a significant reduction, then you Got would it. qualify. So I think it's pretty easy then for most gig workers, most, I mean, pretty much all gig workers to qualify for that aspect. Um, yeah. But I think you mentioned, so they can be 1099, but you have to restructure their business. What are the details we there? Do. Yeah, so essentially what we found is that the best way both for them to save on taxes and to qualify themselves as an employee of their business so they can actually pay themselves a wage mm -hmm. is to set up an LLC and do what's called struct. We we tax it as an S corporation, okay. and essentially what that means is that your business, your LLC. So let's say Lyft pays you as your driver now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to change that to make Lyft pay your LLC mm -hmm. that pays you. Your LLC pays you as an employee yeah. of your business. So now you're an actual. You get a W two from your business. You get a you get a wage from your business, and if you earn, I mean, essentially what the IRS is saying is. Up to ten thousand or more, um, they're going to pay you half of your wage. Or sorry, up to ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So if you make eight thousand this yep. year, they're going to pay you four thousand in a way or in a, in a tax credit. If you make you know six thousand, they pay you you know three thousand mm -hmm. in a tax credit minus those ta those payroll taxes. Got it. So and so yeah. I think when so I, I definitely have talked to drivers in the past about setting up an yeah. LLC, which I think is more for you know it's a limited yeah. liability corporation. So oh. I've talked to drivers who said, oh, you know, I've got a house, I've got these assets. It seems like Absolutely. if you set up an LLC, especially in some states where it's very cheap and inexpensive, yeah. um, it's a good extra layer of liability protection. Are you able Absolutely. to go for this ERC credit if you just have an LLC or if you already have an LLC? So I, I, yeah, so if you already have an LLC, it's, it's a pretty simple thing for, we can do it either way. Mm -hmm. Cause if you pay yourself, I, I don't know all the, I'm, I'm not the, the tax accountant. Mm -hmm. That's my partner. Mm -hmm. So he knows that specific question. Uh, but I did hear one of my accountants say that we could do it as an LLC, but in terms of, uh, uh, calculating the wage, it's much easier and more effective for you to do it as an S corporation. Gotcha. The reason why you get an LLC, there's really no tax benefit mm -hmm. if you're a 1099 contractor uh, or a LLC. They're, they're the same tax benefit. You don't get yeah. any benefit that way. Right. Um, really, the tax benefit comes when you set up an S corporation. So not only are we going to save you in um, your, you know, get you money from the tax yeah. credit, but on the S corp side, rather than taxing all of your income at 15.3% mm -hmm. on the, the state income tax or the the payroll tax, we're saying uh, you're only paying yourself a portion of your amount. So let's say you make fifty thousand. We're going to say you're probably your business. Let's say as a driver, yeah. you know you have a really successful business. You you make fifty thousand this year. You're going to pay yourself a wage of that fifty thousand of about ten to twenty percent. Mm -hmm. So five to you know five thousand yeah. to ten thousand or so. And then they tax that five to ten thousand at fifteen point three percent. Rather than the fifty thousand at fifteen point three percent. Got it. So you're going to save thousands just in taxes on the S corporation, and so that's why we typically push that because our goal is to get you the best possible tax outcome, mm -hmm. and we know that just an LLC isn't going to provide that. Got it. And so, what is the yeah. sort of, I guess, like reasoning, right? Like, if you're some, if you're a driver and you're sort of trying to understand this or a gig worker, like obviously, yeah. you know, it's it's funny sometimes, right? Because there's, you know, I mean, Uber actually has, you know, a very interesting tax structure in the way that they bring in all of your gross payments and then only pay you out. So, you know, I think that a lot of times like drivers are looking and workers are looking at this very simplistically like, hey, I'm working for Uber. You know, if anything, it seems like, you know, I don't even, you know, maybe some drivers think they're employees or whatever it may be. Um, but like, what's the justification, you know, tax wise for doing an LLC as an S corp? I mean, obviously it's good. It sounds good because it saves you money. But, you know, yeah. if, I, if someone was like asking me to justify this, what would I be saying as a driver or worker? Yeah, um, well, I mean, in, in terms of the payroll tax, if like, uh, I mean, going back mm -hmm. uh, again, if you let's say let's say we did this, you make fifty thousand, yeah. and then you have ten thousand in expenses. Mm -hmm. So you have after your expenses, your tax deductions, you have a forty thousand dollar remaining that you're going right. to be taxed on, on just an LLC at fifteen point three percent. 
So 40,000 times 15.3% is what, uh, $6,000 $6, yeah. or so? Okay, so if you pay yourself a wage as, a, yeah. as an S corporation, still make 50,000, mm -hmm. but let's say you pay yourself 5,000 as a wage, yeah. okay? Now you, that 5,000 is taxed at 15.3%, which is what, uh, $750? Mm -hmm rather than $6,000 yeah. as, uh, as, as a payroll tax. Yeah. It's significantly higher. And so pretty much, it, it, we, we've calculated that basically anybody that makes $5,000 or more in profit mm -hmm. is going to benefit tremendously with an S corporation. And, so, I, and, and, and I know this is a pretty common tax, you know, I guess you would say strategy, right? I mean, even my business, yeah. you know, the Rideshare Guy LLC, we're set up as an LLC, as S Corp. I pay myself a wage and then, you know, the rest oh. of the profits are, you don't, you don't have to pay ta the 15.3% taxes. Um, so are there any, you know, sort of like, does that raise any issues with the IRS or any red flags if Uber and Lyft drivers are doing that, for example? Oh, absolutely not. And the reason why is because this is your business. Mm -hmm. the, or like, rather than thinking of it as that, oh, I'm just a contractor for them. Yeah. No, this is my business. Mm -hmm. I am a professional driver. I have expenses. Yeah. I've got, if I've got snacks in my car, that's a tax deduction. If all of my miles, my phone, everything that I'm using, it's all tax deductions. I'm running a successful driving yeah. business right now. I'm a professional driver. And uh, if you think of it that way, you're going to start connecting a lot more tax deductions to your business because it's what's called like ordinary and necessary items mm -hmm. for your business that uh, that you can write off. So it's just a little mindset change, yeah. but it's going to make you save thousands of dollars down the road because you're structuring yourself and preparing yourself for, for taxes. Yeah. The wealthy understand taxes and that's how they stay wealthy. They have they pay people. I don't know many successful, very successful people without an accountant. Yeah. And so for, for us, it's about a, a, um, a paradigm yeah. shift. That, that actually is a, a smart way of putting it. And I think, and, you know, I think like even just off what we, you know, I think one of the questions I was going to ask you later was, you know, if drivers should, you know, think about doing them, them this themselves. And I think you've sort of yeah. already answered that question is that, and I actually like the way you put it is right. Really a lot of the most successful people in life, they kind of understand that, you know, taxes can be very complicated and you sort of need yeah. and want someone who's an expert. If you're someone who's, you know, really looking to kind to go out and maximize you know all of the deductions and all the credits and all that and I think most people generally fall into that camp uh, before I forget I do want to ask you are there is there anything that can disqualify you from getting the employee retention credit I know I saw that if you've gotten a PPP loan for example does yeah. that disqualify you yes the uh, PPP loan will disqualify you um, I think it's a certain amount of unemployment okay. I, I can't remember the exact number is it four or six yeah, I think weeks, four weeks of is what we had seen before Four weeks, yeah. I think if you take four weeks or more in that quarter, then you, you're disqualified. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, if COVID really didn't uh, have any sort of effect, you haven't had any. I don't know what world we're, you're living in. I feel in, like every case. single business and every single person <laughs> running a business right now, like to be frank, like right. even if you ended up making money, at some point you had a negative effect, right? Totally, yeah. So I, I, I don't know if there's. I'm trying to think if there's any other reason why somebody wouldn't qualify. Um, I mean, obviously, you can't just go as a 1099 and try to get the the uh, employee retention credit because okay. you're not structured properly. You don't give yourself a wage, mm. um, so there has to be a shift in in your business in your structure. Business structure. Um, okay. But. I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't know if there's any other disqualifiers, yeah. really. I know. I think I think that makes sense. And I'm, I'm curious. So you've now worked with, you know, I think hundreds of or maybe thousands of uh -huh. gig workers, other people, yeah. you know, sort of coming to you. What's the number one uh, objection that people have? You know, what's the reason why they aren't doing this or don't want to do this? Yeah, I mean, kind of like you said, it sounds too good to be true. Okay. There was actually one person who called us today frustrated because she said, um, I just got a check for $7,000 and I feel like it's a scam. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> uh, so well, she's someone who need... ended up getting the credit applied a while ago. Yeah, they got $7,000 yeah. and they're frustrated with us. And we're like, uh, we did exactly what a, a, a yeah. good account should do is keep or put as much money as they can in your pocket. Yeah. So, 
I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's well, uh, I guess that would be the know. question I would ask you is like, what do you tell drivers if they say, you know, is the employee retention credit a scam? How do you prove to them that it isn't that you guys are legit, especially now? I mean, frankly, in a world, you know, we're, I've never met you guys in person. We're all meeting virtually. Yeah. And I know that, you know, I think in general, it's always good to have, you know, like a healthy bit of skepticism, especially around taxes and totally. IRS stuff where there are some legitimate yeah. you know, scams and fraud. So what, what would you tell someone who, you know, asked you is the the ERC yeah. scam. I, I, we have, uh, I would say it, it, go and, and find out the information for yourself. Oh. Go ask other accountants. Most of them yeah. won't know how to do it, but they won't, they, if they looked it up, they wouldn't say that it, that you don't qualify. Yeah. As long as you're structured correctly, you're fine. We've called congressmen. We've called other accountants. We have called the IRS to try to make sure that everything we're doing is correct. Yeah. And uh, we, when we qualify someone, we're going off the IRS's own guidelines on what qualifies as both, uh, you know, a, uh, a an S corporation or an LLC, and you know what what sort of sick time and FMLA time you can take in conjunction with it. Yeah. So it's important for us that that we're following the IRS's own guidelines. And so I'd say, well, I mean, look at the ch I I got a check myself, so. Uh, it, it, it works. I can promise yeah. you that. So, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I know, especially too, when, uh, when you got, cause you guys were actually the first one to, uh, let me know about it. And that's when, you know, I started looking into it myself. I had a few people on my team test it. And I, as you mentioned, Joe, you know, it ended up, we did a video on it cause it went so well for him. And then I asked you guys if, Hey, can we partner on this and sort of help spread the word to our audience? Totally. Once we saw that, you know, I believe he, cause he had this sort of a situation with, he was married and had kids and he, he got his yeah. up to, I want to say $19,000 for his his yeah. credit. Um, and right. you know, I know the first thing that I did, cause of course, like, I think that came to my mind, this sounds a little too good to be true. Sounds like a scam. <laughs> and I just did it again yeah. right now. I went to Google, I typed in employee retention credit. Uh, Mason, what do you think the first result is? Oh, I imagine it's a advertisement from us saying the, <laughs> something about the employee retention credit. Is it isn't, right? but it's the IRS website, irs.gov oh, okay. employee retention credit. Um, and right. the second one, irs.gov, irs.gov, home.treasury, Investopedia. And so I think that was what was so surprising to me. I was like, wow, this is definitely legit. I mean, the first five or six search results in Google. Okay, this is an actual credit. Um, so yeah. it's not, you know, like, you know, someone, someone trying to just make up something. So I think that's the first thing I did. I also like your tip about talking to other accountants and just kind of getting, you know, maybe it's a financial form or just getting some second opinion. Cause I know that, sure. you know, like for me, whenever I'm trying to vet something, like it might sound great to me, but even if it's yeah. someone who I don't necessarily agree with, just having them look into it and just say, you know, like with a yeah. second set of eyes, what do you think about this? Right. Yeah. And it's funny because I've had other people say, hey, can you teach my accountant how to do this? <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, this yeah. is our intellectual property. We we had we put so much money and research and time. I mean, my intern, I had him up, you know, all night, all day trying to figure out the exact plan of yeah. how it's going to work. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's our secret sauce, but it's it's available yeah. to all right Definitely. just by going and looking at all the forms and different things. Yeah. Well, no, I think that's so. good advice. And I mean, also, and I think the third thing that I, I did well, or I would do in this situation, kind of what we did is, you know, like actually yeah. try it ourselves. Right. I think there's very totally. low risk to taking a call, you know, with you guys or, you know, accounting yeah. firm or doing the research on your own and then sort of yeah. seeing like, OK, you know, walk them through the process, you know, right. sort of see what it's like. Uh, so you guys have obviously been doing a lot of these. What's uh, what's yes. one thing you've learned so far and from, from you know, chatting with so many people at this ERC? Uh, An interesting observation. Um, let's see, interesting observation. Let me think. Um, yeah, uh, people are uh, really excited about getting free money until they have to pay to get free money. Got it. Uh, so yeah, so there, there is there, I guess something to think about is that we, we're in a business, yeah. we're an accounting firm. We, we have fees to be able to do this. And so there's, it's going to be about 10 to 15% of, of what you're going to receive mm -hmm. ends up that almost always ends up what, what we charge to be able to do this. Got it. So there is going to be a charge. We're trying to be as flexible as possible on with people, uh, at, because we understand that people are hurting right now. Yeah. There's so many people who are unemployed. The the uh, the stimulus check ran out in the month it, it came, and uh, you know there's there's people that that really need it. And so we're trying to set up different methods of payment mm -hmm. plans. And I think a lot of your your viewers and listeners have actually come to us and been like, dude, I have like 
I, I, I'm almost, you know, empty of my bank account yeah. and we're like, okay, well, let's, let's do this first small payment yeah. and then we'll do payments as we go. And so then once they get their check, they pay it off, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So well, trying to be as flexible as possible. Yeah. And I mean, I guess I imagine that it's sort of tough cause you have to balance, right? Like obviously like you guys have your own costs and your own fees for, you know, I mean, exactly. every time I get an accountant on the phone and I get a bill in the mail, it's usually not super cheap. <laughs> um, yeah. and so what actually, that's a good question. What are the exact fees? taxes i mean let's let's use like yeah. the five thousand dollar credit for example sure uh, what are the exact yeah. like taxes and fees and who do they go to right so the the taxes on that is going to be it ends up about 15.3 percent okay. um so you're looking about uh one thousand five hundred and thirty dollars okay. um because you're reporting a wage of ten thousand right but you're only getting mm. five thousand but they're still going to take 1530 mm. whether you you want them to okay. or not so the check is going to come for three thousand four hundred and seventy. Okay. And so our fee to do that is usually around five hundred dollars. Okay. But the problem is, is that many of these people have to set up businesses. Mm -hmm. We have to restructure you from a ten ninety nine to an LLC. Mm -hmm. And each state has a different cost. Yeah. So some people are, you know, paying around eight hundred dollars. Some people are paying That's around me in California fourteen you know, hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, some people are paying fourteen hundred dollars. Oh, really? So really. Yeah, it, it, because like Illinois, New York, some of these others, mm. they're eight hundred dollars just to set up the LLC. California, not, not even including <laughs> that eight hundred dollar tax that oh, you okay. had uh, every year for California. Mm. Yeah. So there's the, so, the LLC setup fee, and then uh, potentially yeah. some states have LLC taxes, like yes. California has the eight hundred. Okay. And I mean, yeah. those are obviously, those are pretty transparent. I mean, you can go online sure. and look up exactly yeah. what those, I guess, what, what do you call them? Filing fees and then taxes? for Yeah. Just, yeah business setup fees okay. is what we call them. And so yeah. basically a driver, if they start at, let's say a $5,000 credit, they pay their 15%, um, you know, to the government for, for, yep. Uh, 15.3 percent taxes uh, off yep. the 10,000 and then they have to pay you guys a fee which it sounds right. like you can work with them on the payment plan so that may not be all up front but then the other right. like LLC filing fees and any potential taxes depend on the state what are, what are like some example like you're in Utah for example like what are the yeah. I, I know some states are cheaper like what does that cost in Utah for example yeah in Utah the business setup fees three hundred dollars okay. so we set that up so it's gonna be there's there's a couple things to consider because we have the actual um, S corp setup, which yeah. is 300. We have the the charge to do the single single S corporation, mm -hmm. right, for the ERC. Yep. So that's going to be about 800. And then we've got two quarterly taxes. When you switch from a uh, like a 1099 to an S corporation, mm -hmm. you're not just paying annual taxes anymore. Yeah you're paying wages to yourself as a corporation right. every quarter. And so we have to report wages. And so we throw that in there. It uh, And then we have taxes at the beginning of next year that we do your business and your personal taxes. Mm -hmm. So in my case, I think it would be around, um, I think it's like twelve or $1,300 total okay. for everything. Okay. So, yeah. so it's not bad, but I mean, I guess that is the, you know, in life, right? It, nothing, it, it always is like, oh, $5,000 <laughs> sounds a little too good to be true. Yeah. Technically, you know, it isn't right. quite 5,000. Okay. After the taxes, yeah. it drops down to 34. And then after your guys' fees and like a Utah, for example, yeah. it drops down to 2,100, I guess we would call it or 2,200. Right. Um, still yes. though, you know, I mean, if, if yeah. I'm sort of putting myself in, in the shoes of a driver right now, okay, I, I vet this opportunity for an hour or two, you know, talk to you guys for an hour or two, yeah. you know, maybe spend another, you know, even like in a very, conservative estimate if I'm spending a few hours on this three four five or even six hours I'm still making two thousand bucks right <laughs> yeah exactly so. and a, a lot of people think that we're just gonna take it out of the check we can't yeah. legally do that so mm. we can't take it out of the check it the full check of thirty four hundred dollars is still gonna come to you but you've already paid us that amount mm. by or about by the time it comes yeah. so you can't just say hey yep the IRS we're gonna say yep send us you know the the Got cost it. of everything that would be uh, that, ideal, that, though, that, huh? <laughs> that would be pretty yeah, cool if you could do that. It'd be perfect, yeah. yeah. It'd be awesome. It's just something that they're not doing. Right, because I imagine so. that if you guys, you know, tell people that they can pay you, or I guess, yeah, well, why don't, if someone wants to pay you your fee once they get the check, what do you say to them, or why can't you guys do yeah. that? The, the problem is that we're paying money up front yeah. um, to set up their business on their behalf. Yeah. And so we're waiting to get paid. And uh, so that's why we say, listen, you pay that the business setup fee and pay it as we go. That way we're not waiting till the very end. Plus in today's day and age, it's, it's so easy for them to ghost us. Yeah. 
And even if we try so that's to, that's what chase I was thinking. To be honest, like I'm, I'm, I'm not like a negative person, but I'm like a realistic person, and like yeah. I always think about like, okay, what's you know, I'm optimistic, and like what's the upside, but also like in in a worst case scenario, like what could or would happen. Like I could definitely see, you know, whether it's you know, uh, what's the word, sort of, you know, on purpose or not. Like some people maybe they yeah. get that check and they literally like just can't afford to pay you guys at that point. They need that money for something, right? So I guess that's a risk that, that you guys kind of have to avoid too, right? Yeah, and we have to, I mean, that's, if we're setting up payment plans, that's something we, we have to consider yeah. because there might be some people who, who just aren't able to. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's hard, um, but that's that's the reality of our business and, and today. So there's there's really nothing we can do yeah. um, except pound them for, to pay us. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the last thing you want to do as, as any type of business. Yeah. Um, you, know, you want everybody to be able to, um, you know, uh, pay on time, but sometimes that's not a reality. Yeah. So, and so I think yeah. the only other thing that I saw that uh, might be a little tough for people to <laughs> wait on is the, actually the time that they have to wait to yeah. get the check, right? What are we looking at right now? And what are, what are you kind for of sure. estimating for your clients that they'll actually yeah, get the so, check? Yeah, so like if, if we filled out something with them right now, and today we're what, November 18th, yeah, 19th, 19th, November 19th, the earliest that we can file their, their quarterly form is the very last week of December. Mm. So we're looking at about four weeks from right now. And then the IRS, sometimes they're faster. Like my brother got his check in like five weeks, mm -hmm. but some people it's taking 12 to yeah. 16 weeks. Yeah. So they're looking probably March or April. And especially when you find out the IRS is like 14 million filings behind, yeah. that's where it's like, okay, uh, we're putting something in their hands and they're not required to uh, like to, to set it, to live to a deadline, but we all have to, it's kind of yeah. a double standard there, which is kind of frustrating as an accounting firm that works with the IRS regularly. For sure. But uh, yeah, yeah. So we're looking probably 12 to 16 weeks from today. Okay. So obviously so. not super quick, but I, I, it's kind of, it kind of helps me get in the right mindset. You know, like if I'm a driver, if I'm a yeah. you know, 1099 worker, I'm applying for this, I'm not going to have, you know, 5,000 buck cash in my hand, you know, the second I apply for this, but I'll have a little bit less after the taxes and fees, you know, definitely you know, compared to the, my hourly rate driving for Uber, it's about 10 or 20 yeah. times the amount. Right. So it's definitely a positive, sure. but it's sort of like, okay, I pay, and I also have to pay some money right now, but you know, in two, three, four, yeah. probably, you know, three to four months, like you said, I will receive a check, um, you know, for the, for yeah. this credit for the government. And, and, and many people legitimately qualify for much more than that 5,000, like mm. your, uh, like your partner, Joe, yeah. Joe, Joe got up to 19,000. He's got the the taxes and then the, the amount that he's going to pay us. And I think it said he was going to make like 13,000 in a check that's yeah. going to come. Yeah. Um, because me and my kids, my wife's situation, the, the yeah. fact that she does a lot of work for us, she, uh, we ended up getting a check for like almost 15,000. Yeah. So well, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing that, that this is, is there because it, it, us, just like everybody else, we've, we've had shutdowns, yeah. we've had closures. There's, We've been affected negatively, yeah. for sure. Yeah, no, Joe's so. situation was pretty cool. I'll leave a link to that um, below. We did a video, an article on with actually literally like Joe's experience kind of going for the credit and exactly how it all broke down for him. And, you know, I sort of, sort of, I wanted to balance, like, I think we've been kind of advertising it or, you know, or, you know, telling drivers like this is a $5,000 employee retention credit because that's really what the credit is. Yeah, But totally. like, to be honest, like in Joe's situation, this won't apply to everyone, right? He's probably the top of the top, but like the potential yeah. Is sure. actually, you know, thirteen thousand, or you know, after it was nineteen thousand, after all the fees and taxes and everything, it came down to thirteen thousand. Um, so it was a pretty cool. Like when he texted me that, I was like, "Whoa, that's a pretty, pretty good little payout." Um, so, he, he was pretty happy. That was pretty cool to see. So I definitely. And, and it's fun. It's fun for us because we're getting um, uh, no, we're getting you know pictures uh, from our clients that show the picture of you yeah. know the check. And we're like, yes, nice. it's working. Like our clients are happy; That's they're cool. getting what they're they're paying for, and it's putting money in their pocket that they otherwise never would have known about. Because honestly, I don't. I'm I'm still. I only know of one other firm, mm -hmm. somewhat locally, that that does this. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody else is doing it. So for us, we're like, we have to get news out yeah. to these people. 
because people are hurting. They need it. Yeah. No, I, th- I think it's definitely a, a good service you guys are doing. And, you know, equally, that's sort of why we're trying to amplify the message to as many drivers and, uh, you know, gig workers out there as possible so they can get on this, learn a little bit more, see if they qualify and, uh, you know, sort of take advantage of it if they can. Um, is there anything else uh, folks should know about the process of uh, working with your firm or about the uh, ERC in general that we might have missed? Yeah, I, I, I think the only thing that I want to make sure that everybody knows is that this, uh, we are, I've hired 12 new people. I'm, I'm poised to hire even more people. It's been a massive, actually more than 12. We're, we're, we're hiring like four more people right now. So Very cool. we are, we are trying to stay on top of all the phone calls, all the notifications, all the questions. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a good, but a difficult challenge. Yeah. And so just please be patient with us. We want to serve you. We want to help you. Yeah. Um, just it, it's going to take a little bit of time. Help us, you know, get our feet under us and catch up to all the uh, the, the need out there. No, we're I, trying. I, I think that is actually patience is probably a key virtue yeah. in this entire process because you know I'm sure that so, as that you know if, if 12 to 16 weeks right now, but you know who knows what will happen in the future. It might you know you don't you guys don't necessarily have control. It might take a little longer. So that's sort of Absolutely. why I think it's important if people are looking at this credit to like understand that hey if you need this money in 12 weeks like your you know your life is gonna go down the drain if you don't have it like uh, you might want to look at another plan because it's not a sure thing that you'll get it in 12 weeks exactly right yeah, yeah. maybe put money into bitcoin and hope <laughs> that that goes up to twenty five thousand, and then you know then you'll get uh, more money back than you would have yeah. with us but yeah for cool. sure. And the only other question I had, and I think is interesting because, you know, the, the LLC is S Corp set up. You mentioned some, kind of some of the actual just, you know, outside of the ERC, there's some tax benefits for drivers and gig sure. workers. I mean, my business yeah. is set up like that for, you know, the tax savings that you mentioned. Um, I guess drivers and, and gig workers that use you guys to set up LLC as S Corp, they will have to now file a personal and business tax return and yes. quarterly business right. um, tax payments, which I'm assuming costs more, but they will save even more or the goal, right? The idea is that they'll save yeah. more, you know, going forward. Like, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand, like, what are the future, like, what am I getting myself signed up for, you know, every yeah. year going forward? <laughs> totally. Yeah. And that that's the thing. Um, so let's say we do set up an LLC mm-hmm. as corporation for you. In almost every single scenario, we're not only are we putting money in your pocket through the ERC, but we're also going to save you a lot in taxes. My business partner's probably done 15,000 mm-hmm. uh, LLC S Corp tax returns. Wow. And so this is his bread and butter. He mm-hmm. knows uh, places to look that most uh, accountants won't. And that's why so many people have come back year after year with my, uh, with my business partner. He is, uh, he, he has a master's in taxation. That's what he's, that that's, exactly his uh, his niche so we recognized that there was a need in 1099 there's really not many accountants yeah. that specialize just in the 1099 and our goal is to make sure you keep as much in your pocket because you work hard for that money and 15.3 percent tax is high yeah it is high for especially people who are making twenty thousand dollars a year that that's yeah. a lot of their income Definitely. And so we want to keep that in your pocket. Our fees, we recognize if we can do enough volume, mm-hmm. we don't have to have really high fees. Yeah. I know people that will do, you know, tax returns for four thousand yeah. dollars for business and personal taxes. And ours is comes to four hundred. Yeah. Very so reasonable. It's uh yeah, it's it's a lot more reasonable and, and obviously the amount that you're gonna pay, you're in almost every scenario, you're going to get that money back. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, using CPAs and accountants, especially when it comes to taxes, just because I think not only is there so much, you know, they can kind of help you with on the deduction side, but just helping you understand where, you know, you should be like more aggressive or less aggressive on deductions. You're like, okay, here's the average, you know, mileage, dedu- or, you know, whatever it might be, just kind of like helping you look out for, for that stuff, as opposed to you filling stuff in on TurboTax and kind of guessing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, anybody could, you know, there's really, it's funny because so many of my accountants that we hire, mm-hmm. they're like, man, I wish we learned this in school mm-hmm. because I have no idea that you could write these things off yeah. or that these tax strategies even existed. 
And uh, so uh, it's it. There's not much education when it comes to taxation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. definitely. Cool. Well, I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, I learned a lot during this session. And I think, uh, uh, you know, it's been cool to spread the word to drivers and gig workers, and really anyone with 1099 income out there that might, or business owners that might qualify for this ERC. If people want to, uh, what's the next step? Should they fill out the form on your website? I know yeah. we have a link for uh, that. Yeah. There's, there's a couple things. Uh, they can go through the link that, you, that you're providing. They can go to cosaccounting.com. Um, you can type in, you know, ERC, COS. Uh, you'll, you'll find us. Um, but, Harry, I think you've given them enough resources to be able to find, you know, what they're, what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, you can, you know, check us out and give us a call. Uh, fill out the form. Uh, it's a free consultation. We don't charge you to have a conversation with you. Cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we'd we'll, love to chat. Uh, make sure to leave a link in the show notes if you're listening or down below if you're watching the video right now. Um, we've got a yeah. nice qualifier form that gets all their basic info signed up. And then I think it sounds like you guys will give them a call or um, follow up with them once they fill out that form on your website, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yep. That's absolutely right. All right, Mason. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to all these drivers getting those checks in 12 to 16 weeks. We'll have to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. In four months, we'll, uh, <laughs> you'll see the comments saying thank you so much. All right. Take care. <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, Harry.